When you get started with designing your online activities and assessments, it's a great idea to take a look back at the three steps to designing your online course. One, identify desired results. Two, determine acceptable evidence. And three, plan learning experiences and facilitation. And remember, as you progress through the process of designing your course, it's helpful to anchor these three steps with relevant questions like these. What do you want them to know? How will you know that they have learned? What will they do? Now that last question can really be a tough one for some professors. Typically when faculty begin to teach online, their first inclination is to want to strategize ways to recreate what's gone on here in the face-to-face -face classroom. Now, if we were to randomly select a sample of college classes and walk into those classes while they were in session, I would bet the large majority of the students would be aligned in a fashion that looks something like this. And the instructor would be standing at the front delivering some type of verbal information to the students. Would you agree? But let us remember, just because an instructor has taught doesn't mean those students have learned. Over the past several decades, as learning has been researched and improved, we've realized that our groups of students are comprised of diverse types of learners. Therefore, a singular instructional approach is not going to do much to support the variation of the learners in a class. We've also realized that learning is not a spectator sport. Learning is active. And therefore, many classrooms incorporate small group activities in an effort to encourage more learners to interact with one another, be exposed to diverse ideas, and engage in multiple modes of expression. But for a moment, let us ponder how learning and communication has been impacted by some sweeping changes in our society outside the college classroom. Social mobile technologies are transforming the way individuals interact, experience the world, and share those experiences with one another. Social networks enable individuals to curate groups of people that can be comprised from people all over the world. And we learn from these people on the go, from a computer the size of our palm, carried in a pocket. Gartner, a technology research group, has predicted that by the year 2016, 30% of large companies will use social networks in place of phones and email. And our traditional college-age students are shifting more and more towards a creator society as mobile and social technologies amplify both the desire and the ease of creating and sharing videos, images, websites, and eBooks. So when you find yourself asking, what are my students going to do in my online class to learn? and to demonstrate what they've learned. Be sure recreating what you do here will prepare your students for a successful life here. Because when you teach online, one thing is for sure, your classroom is gone. And it's up to you to decide which way to go with that reality. Learning with the internet, as opposed to learning within walls, presents a connected environment that is active, student-centered, and without walls. So with that in mind, what will your students do? And how will they demonstrate to you what they have learned?